What is up you guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Drew Hoover and we have now reached the part three, the final part of my 2021 NFL mock draft. Again, I implore you, if you haven't seen the first two parts yet, please watch them on my channel at your average Jewish sports network before finishing off with part three. And this has been an incredible journey guys. It feels weird to finish this off. But let's get started with the 21st pick, which is owned by the Indianapolis Colts, and they are now on the clock. Uh, a lot of people would say that they were trying to get some offensive line right here uh, with the uh, the retirement of Anthony Casanzo. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a lot of offensive linemen that's came off the board so far. In fact, five of the top offensive linemen have came off the board so far. So it makes you wonder, is that where they need to address? Maybe they need to address the defensive side. I feel like this, is, as, as impressive as the Colts have been, I feel like there still needs a need to address because, you know, when you talk about that game against the Buffalo Bills that they lost, they were so close. If they just had a few more defensive playmakers in there, then maybe it could, you know, be the difference and stuff. So what do they do with that pick? Well, we don't know. But the pick is in, and with the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Nick Bolton, linebacker from Missouri. And if you're familiar with the defensive philosophy that's in Indianapolis, they've been seeming to running towards a Tampa 2, which means a lot depends on that middle linebacker position be able to run zone coverage, be able to be fast and attack. I feel like Nick Bolton does just that. I feel like he's a typical Tampa 2 linebacker right here. He gives you a, a guy that can, uh, like I said, accelerate and a guy that can get after a ball carry and stuff. You team him along with Darius Leonard. Um, yeah, I feel like that defense just got a little bit more scary. And now let's go to the 22nd pick with the Tennessee Titans. And they went from going to the AFC Championship one year to losing in the wild card, which to me was a surprise. I've expressed this before, but again, I was kind of happy that the Baltimore Ravens finally won a playoff game. But you're hoping that they can take a step forward. Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator, like he says, now the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons, which means the tight end coach, Todd Browning, became the offensive corner, which is curious because Arthur Smith was also a former tight end coach. And now, so now he's the offensive corner right there. Makes you wonder if they'll follow a similar philosophy to Arthur Smith. They talk about they could address the defensive side right there, even though they've done so much. Considering the uh, one of their signings is Bud Dupree from Pittsburgh. So I feel like they can do whatever they want right here. I still focus on the fact that they did lose Jonas Smith, the tight end, and also Corey Davis, who went to New York. And the pick is in, and with the 22nd pick and the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Wondell Moore, wide receiver from Purdue. And man, this guy was a freakish, Oh, man, he was an ultimate playmaker and stuff. A lot of me reminds me of Percy Harvin from The Ohio State University. And it definitely gives you another different dimension to this offense. You're talking about being able to attack the ball vertically down the field with a physical specimen like Corey Davis and A.J. Brown. But now you got Rondell Moore in there. You can uh, put a lot of different packages in there. Both the Tennessee Titans and the Green Packers have both expressed interest in Rondell Moore. I hope the Packers can maybe address that need right there later on in the first round. But it looks like the Tennessee Titans got their man with Rondell Moore. And now let's move on to the 23rd pick with the second pick for the New York Jets, who obviously got their quarterback of the future. I think Robert Sullivan would like to get this defense of going. Um, I would like to see them get linebacker because, like I said, he, he himself is a linebacker coach. But four linebackers have already came off the board right here. And um, and so I feel like they need to then address the defensive line right here. A lot have said that they could address pass rusher at this point right here. And so far, not a single pass rusher has come off the board 
which I think is a, a new thing to experience if you're an NFL fan. But I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if guys like Cutie Pay, Jalen Phelps, could maybe even uh, be selected, uh, maybe between picks 11 and 20. But at this point, I feel like they go conservative. They go, like I said, most teams will pick a wide receiver and offensive line within those picks. And so the pick is in for the New York Jets. Hopefully they get someone to build that defense with. And with the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jalen Phillips, defensive end from Miami. And again, he's going to bring that same defensive philosophy that he brought into from San Francisco. He's similar to, to Dan Quinn and Gus Bradley, where he's got that base 4-3. And when you look at the defensive players, he surrounded himself with pass rushers, this big physical specimens. Talk about DeForest Bunker, who eventually went to Indianapolis, Eric Armstead, Nick Bosa. You know, all these were, like I said, you know, guys that could be physical, come off the edge. And when you look at Jalen Phillips, this guy is a physical specimen, and people argue he's the best edge rusher in this draft. Or like I said, I mentioned before that Gary Russo was considered to be the top, but when the Miami Day Pro Day came up, then he showed that he was superior, and I think that makes a difference because the Jets and Robert Sala have picked him to be their new edge rusher in New York. And now let's move on to the 24th pick with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And to me, uh, they're, they're, I don't think there's a lot of needs, but I feel like they need they can address the offensive line. They didn't sign back their uh, uh, left tackle, who's still in free agency. They thought he was going to sign with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they did sign back uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, but they didn't sign James Conner. He's in Arizona. Again, Bud Dupree on the defensive side, he went to Tennessee. They could address that edge rusher right there. But then yet again, Devin Bush could use a counterpart. They could give him another middle linebacker. So there's different opportunities for this Pittsburgh Steelers to capitalize on. And I feel like, uh, I think whatever they choose, I think Mike Tomlin maybe has struggled with the picks he's made in the past, like Terrell Edmonds. Obviously, I don't think he's turned out that quite well. But I feel like they're hoping to redeem themselves with this pick that is now in. And with the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Najee Harris, running back from Alabama. Not only does it give you a need at the running back position, but when you look at the drama that the, the Pittsburgh Steelers have just been dealing with the last few years with Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, they're not only, I think they're not only looking for an, a, an athlete, a running back, they're looking for a team player. And when you when you hear articles about a running back that not, that's not even supposed to be there, that drives eight to 10 hours just to support his teammates, uh, there's no reason why Mike Tomlin likes Najee Harris right here. A lot of people say that the Miami Dolphins would have picked him at number 18. But again, they, the, I feel like the, the Miami Dolphins would trade back except to trade with the Baltimore Ravens. If you haven't seen that second video and know what happened there, please look at that before going to this film. But anyway, the Najee Harris, they get the running back of the future. And I feel like, I've told you this before, he's one of the few running backs in this league that I feel like a whole team could rally behind, especially when you're talking about Ben Roethlisberger who could eventually retire any year now. And now let's go to the 25th pick with the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, who just drafted Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback of the future. And so you wonder, do they draft another wide receiver to help that spread offense on their Urban Meyer? Do they draft a running back? Again, this is a little late. We just drafted a running back right here. Uh, Travis, the team would still be on the clock. Uh, Talk about the defensive side. Um, again, another uh, new uh, defensive coordinator that says, hey, we're going to bring multiple looks into the mix and stuff with three, four, four, three looks. So it's interesting to see how these defensive personnel is going to fit in with what uh, uh, Joe Collin, the defensive coordinator, wants to do. And so the pick is in. And with the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Joseph Osai, linebacker 
from Texas. And to me, this is that's gonna shock everybody right here. When you talk about Cutie Pay is available right there, you got Aziz Ujulari from Georgia. He was still right there. But again, when you talk about the the defense they want, they want to give different looks, which means you got it. So Cutie Pay could have still been the option right there. But when you talk about assistant coach Chris Ash, who's on the Jacksonville staff, who just last year was Joseph Osai's defensive coordinator, I think Joseph Osai has a friend in the Jacksonville uh, coaching staff, and I feel like it might be a stretch for him to be picked at this point. They could wait to the second round to get him, but I think I think they they get their edge rusher that I feel like can fit that multiple defensive scheme with Joseph Osai. And now let's go to the 26th pick with the Cleveland Browns. Again, a team that is shocked everybody by being the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just signed Jadavion Clowney. So you're wondering what this team has left to do. They can be a championship team. Depends on if Baker Mayfield can step it up. Could a wide receiver be a thing they address right here? Again, if you have multiple weapons, I did mention uh, earlier in the segment about uh, Jets and the uh, the Browns game when the Browns wide receiving core all got COVID and then the Jets beat them because they didn't have no one to throw to. Uh, they could so you wonder if they need depth at a wide receiver position. But then again, you could use defense. You know, even though there's you know the linebackers that have come off the board quickly right here, um, it does make you wonder uh, if they maybe stretch up to get a linebacker right there. So the pick is in, and with the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Caleb Farley, cornerback from Virginia Tech, a guy that most people's regards was the number one corner, but he just had back surgery. So you're wondering how far this man's gonna fall, and the Cleveland Browns got so lucky right here because you get to team him up with Denzel Ward. You have Bree Williams that could be your nickel back. Man, I feel like, man, when you talk about the, like I said, the wild card game, they still won, but at the same time, they still allowed Pittsburgh to score over 30 plus points. So they gotta be able to defend the pass. Like I said, they, they uh, signed Jadavion Clowney, which will help Miles Garrett. And now they get a defensive bag for a huge steal at number 26. And now let's move on to number 27 because the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock. Whenever they had two picks in the first round, and just so you know, if I didn't clarify in the first video, that when the Miami Dolphins accepted a trade from the, from the Baltimore Ravens, the, the, they traded down to the number 31st pick. So they still kept this pick right here at number 27, but Miami Dolphins got that 31st pick, so we'll get to them in a second. But at number 27 right here, um, you talk about they traded away um, Orlando Brown. Um, I think, you know, I think they wanted to get an offensive lineman right there. Um, but, you know, in the draft, but um, I feel like it might be a little bit of stretch right here. So it makes you wonder what they could address. Uh, there's a defensive side, they could use a safety. They have no Earl Thomas right there. Um, you talk about um, outside linebacker, they could use an edge rusher. Matt Juden went to the New England Patriots. So I feel like either one of those could be the pick right there. And the pick is in and with the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Aziz Ujulari, defensive end from Georgia. I think this just fits perfectly. A guy that can bend around the edge. I feel like he can also uh, stand in a two-point stance if he has to. I think that just fits perfectly with that that's the three-four scheme that they got going in Baltimore right there. And I feel like with a guy that had eight sacks and four forced fumbles last year, I feel like that gives a definite, you know, builds that defense even more. And so let us go on to the 28th pick with the New Orleans Saints who had to say goodbye to Drew Brees. I've mentioned this before, he retired. And perhaps, you know, Jameis Winston is their future quarterback. They could just go back to Taysom Hill. But I think regardless, I think they could use a, a wide receiver. They could use interior defense alignment. I told you 
that uh, it's rarely a weak class for the interior defensive linemen. And it's shown by the fact that no interior defensive linemen has come off the board at this point. And so I feel like there's not a lot of needs for this team, but at the same time, who they pick I think is uh, essential when you consider Tom Brady uh, and uh, the Carolina Panthers and Matt Rule. Um, I feel like it really matters who they pick uh, at this point. And the pick is in. And with the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Terrace Marshall Jr., wide receiver from LSU. And again, you're talking about a guy that can attack the ball vertically down the field, but also a guy that can take a short game into a long game. He's very quick in his cuts. And again, everyone was surprised when him and Jamar Chase ran the same 40-yard dash at 4.38. You team him up with uh, Michael Thomas. I think Jameis Winston's going to love this pick without a shot of a doubt. Now we're at number pick 29. My Packers have finally arrived right here. And again, we are just hoping, hoping that they draft a wide receiver here. I know it's been 2002 since they drafted a wide receiver in the first round. But I want them to so bad. And I and like I said, it has shown that when they kept dodging wide receiver, it was the same result. You know, they lost to the championship with the 49ers. They should have drafted a wide receiver. They didn't. Turns out, a year later, same result. Lost to the championship game to the Timber Bay Buccaneers. So I think they hopefully realize that they need a wide receiver right here. If not, they always go offensive lineman or they always go defensive playmaker, particularly I think linebacker would be the case. And the pick is in. And with the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver from Minnesota, they finally get an offensive playmaker that can take the pressure off of Devontae Adams. And man, uh, people, like I said, I'm kind of skeptical about this, but when I heard that he's actually had talks with the Packers GM, I'm like, that can't be coincidental. I don't think Rashawn Bateman is a wide receiver that's gonna slip that deep into the second round. It would have to be a first rounder, and I feel like Hopefully Rashad Bateman is the pick for the Green Packers at number 29. And now we're at pick number 30, which means we're talking about the Buffalo Bills being on the clock right here. And man, ah, man, they were so close. Like I said, as much as I love the Chiefs, part of me rooted for the underdog, you know, for the Buffalo Bills and stuff. You know, the fact that Josh Allen, again, a guy that I felt like was also deserving an MVP, you know, um, I feel like they're so close that you just wonder if there's one more piece that is waiting for them at number 30 that could take them over the top right here. And honestly, I think dealer's choice, I think they could get a defensive player at every level right there and, and it would be successful. Um, people have said they could be tempted to, to draft a running back, but um, I don't know. I mean, they're so far their running backs that you know the Devin Singletary and Zach Moss have uh, shown that they have uh, problems with injuries. But I don't think it's that enough of a concern to draft in the first round. And the pick is in. And with the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Asante Samuel Jr., cornerback from. Florida State. Now I have a friend from Brian Amen who said uh, that when I when I suggested this pick to him, that he's like he'd probably go with someone that could do more of a cover. But uh, nonetheless, I feel like they just got to go with the best cornerback they have available right there. Like I said, the top corners are off the board right there. I think I did hear that Ty, uh, Tyson Campbell and Eric Stokes are cornerbacks that could end up slipping into the first round. But I feel like those are more uh, developmental type of corners. I feel like Asante Samuel is a guy that is ready to play right away, especially if you if you play cover one or cover two. It, I mean, I think you got Tredavious White on one side and you get Asante Samuel on the other. And like I said, a guy that is not afraid to take chances and like his father before him can, can uh, anticipate and jump and take the ball off. 
I think that's something that you need, especially when you want to get over the hump and beat teams like Kansas City. And so we're at the number 31st pick. And again, this is where the Miami Dolphins get in their trade with the Baltimore Ravens. And so it makes you wonder what they're going to do right here. They could have gotten a wide receiver right there, but uh, they obviously, you know, traded out, you know, and, you know, so with all these wide receivers gone, could they still get a wide receiver right here? Elijah Moore still on the board. Uh, Kadarius Tony, I've mentioned him before. He's from the Florida area, so it wouldn't be that far for him to go. Uh, they could still address the defensive side at defensive lining. Cutie Pay is still right there. Again, when you're talking about uh, Brian Flores' defense, I feel like he could fit that defense quite well. And the pick is in. And with the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Travis Etienne, running back from Clemson. And again, another shocker right here. But when you talk about Champ Gailey's offense, he likes to run a lot of zone runs, which means you have to wait for the run to develop. And I feel like that is Travis Etienne's strong suit. Tell my guys like Le'Veon Bell that have known to do that. And when he finds a gap, he can explode it with burst and accelerate and stuff. I feel like he's an underrated running back in this draft, despite all the stats that he did at Clemson. And I'll say it again, he was, he was just as much to the team as uh, Trevor Lawrence was. And I feel like he fits in there, especially when you talk about the run pass option. If you had to choose between, you know, running it uh, with Travis Etienne or having Tua Tagovailoa throw it to one of his weapons, I think that's an interesting thing to consider. And now we're at the final pick in the NFL Draft, or I should say the first round of the NFL Draft, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I told you this before, they don't have a lot of needs. So wherever they address here, I feel like the, the, the fans are going to be happy with. I wouldn't be surprised if a team traded up, you know, to, you know, from the thirty, you know, from the second round to get somebody in the thirty second. Especially like I said, when you talk about uh, players that are still available right there with Cutie Pay, with uh, uh, Trenton Nairig, the safety. A lot of people saw him as a top fifteen pick. He has now slid up down to this point. Talk about the wide receivers I just mentioned with Elijah Moore, Kadarius Tony. I think if any one of those guys um, slides down there, a team could trade up right there. But I feel like they stay with what they have right here, and they just go with the best player available. And so now the pick is in, and with the final pick, with the 31st pick and the 2021 NFL Draft, 32nd, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Trevin Mayrig, safety from TCU. You team him up with Antoine Winfield Jr. and not to, and like Antoine Winfield, not a guy that can uh, that's afraid not to go downfield to tackle at the line of scrimmage and stuff. And man, I just think the defense just got a little scarier right there. And so this ends my 2021 NFL mock draft. Uh, I, like I said before, I know a lot of this may end up being wrong, especially with the trades. These are just speculations right here. But I hope. But really, the whole point of this mock draft is to showcase what I know. And uh, again, I hope that things unfold, especially from my part. If I'm a Packers fan. I want them to pick wide receiver in the first round. But it's really interesting to see the guys with the stories that they've had, how much hard work they've put into to finally get up to this point in the NFL draft. And uh, in this video, I want you to leave your comments. Is there someone that went undrafted in the first round that you think should be drafted in the first round? Again, you now notice that Cutie Pay has now slipped into the second round. Kadarius, Tony, is there any other player that I've mentioned that is there anyone that, that that you think deserves to be drafted in the first round? Let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys, for those who enjoy the NFL draft, I know it's a it's a dealer's choice right here. I know a lot of people don't like watching the NFL draft, but for those who do, 
I hope you have fun as much as I do. Have a good day, guys. All right, guys, hope you liked my video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to your average Joe's. Don't miss on any of my videos. Also, if you have any graphic design needs, go to Anthony Garcia. Check out his website, Anthony Garcia Design. His website will be in the description below.